Welcome to the web series, The Heroes Call, where champions of safety and justice in the community are profiled. The series is co-hosted by attorney Mark Diller and his colleague, Dr. John Naranja. Dr. John is both an attorney and a doctor. I've heard it said that a home is where the heart is, but what does that really mean? Today's guest on A Hero's Call is Sharon Martin, Executive Director of Household Goods, and she's gonna help us answer this question. Sharon, welcome to Heroes Call. Thank you, it's great to be here today. Sharon, can you uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure, uh, my name is Sharon Martins. I'm the Executive Director at Household Goods. Household Goods is a nonprofit that provides a full range of donated furniture and other household items free of charge to help people in need make their homes. And uh, why is it that you're, you're doing this? Having a bed to sleep on and a table to eat at, um, a couch to have family time with, those are all things that every person should have. It shouldn't be a luxury. Um, and many people throughout um, the Commonwealth don't have those most basic items. And household goods is here to give those items to people who need them. And the, the individuals who need them, how do they, how do they contact you? So people come to household goods uh, through a referral from a social service agency. Um, the agencies that refer to us are all over Massachusetts. And uh, how did you get involved with this? So I have always, ever since I was little, wanted to go into um, a helping profession. I've always been drawn to organizations that make a difference um, in somebody's life. And I think that the difference household goods makes in somebody's life is just so basic. We're not providing luxuries to people. We're giving them things that every human being should have, you know, a bed, a pillow, a table. Um, and I think that making that difference, it's giving people a foundation that they can grow from and go on from. I think the beauty of household goods is that um, household goods has been around for about 32 years and it is mainly run by volunteers. Um, each year, we have about 1,000 volunteers contribute over 47,000 hours. That's the equivalent of about 20 full-time positions staffed by 1,000 volunteers. And to come to work every day to see all of these people who are trying to make the world a better place and getting nothing in return, it's inspiring. And it's just an amazing organization. I heard the term uh, make a home, and I've read it throughout your website. What does that mean to household goods? What does that mean to you? So making a home means that people can choose what they want to live with and what they want in their home. So if somebody comes in and they want everything to be floral or they want everything to be pink, if we have it, they can set it up and make it theirs. Um, and I think it's also having a full range of items. So it's not just about getting a couch and a bed and a table, of course, those are really important, but it's the little things, the extras, the pictures on the wall, the little decorative um, item that really give people a connection and they make it theirs and they make it a place where they're, they feel comfortable and their family feels comfortable. In your observations, what's the significance of people who are being serviced by household goods, that they get to choose these items for themselves? I think, um, you know, what, what, what our, one of our founders, Ira Smith, always said is that when people come to household goods, they're always a little bit of unsure about what it's going to be like, you know? And so they always walk in a little bit tentatively. And when they come, we pair them with a volunteer who acts as sort of a personal shopper with them to help them you know, navigate the space, figure out what they need, what will fit, um, but also to really give them the power to make choices for themselves. And for a lot of people that have been through various social service systems, they don't have that ability to, to make choices. And so when they come and they have the choice to say, I want that, or I don't want that, or I like that, it really empowers them and as Ira would say, they leave with their heads held up just a little bit higher in knowing that they decided for themselves what they were gonna do. Can you share with us a little bit about the story of the origin of household goods? How did it start? Who started it? 
Yeah. Um, Household Goods has a great story. Our founders, Barbara and Iris Smith, they never intended on starting anything. Um, back in 1990, there was a lot of violence in El Salvador. And um, there was a woman who lived in Acton who um, was having her sister and her sister's kids come from El Salvador to live with her or, or near her in Acton. And she happened to call uh, St. Elizabeth's Church in Acton. And lucky for her, Barbara Smith answered the phone. And she asked if anybody at the church could help furnish an apartment for her sister and her sister's kids. And Barbara said, sure, I'll put an ad in the church bulletin and people can drop things off at my house and we'll be done. So they put out a note asking for items to furnish an apartment and they needed you know, one couch, one table, two dressers, and they got double of everything. So they furnished this woman's home and then they had all of these leftover items and they thought, well, what are we gonna do with them? So they called the Acton Housing Authority to ask if anybody there could use them. But somehow there was a little bit of a miscommunication and the Acton Housing Authority person thought they meant, oh, if people need anything, they should just call Barb and Ira. And they put their home phone number in their newsletter. So Barb and Ira would get these calls saying, hey, I need a bed, do you have one? And Barb would go back to the church bulletin, ask for a bed, she'd get five. And I don't know about you, but if it were me, after a couple of calls, I would have said like, yeah, I'm done, didn't mean to do that. But being the most amazing, just open people on the planet, they kept saying yes. So they would ask for a couch, they'd get five. They'd ask for a fridge, they'd get three. They'd ask for, you know, it just went on and on. And they filled their carport, they filled their basement, they filled their volleyball court that they had in their backyard. And they just kept saying, yes, we'll help. We will help the person in front of us. And um, 32 years later, they furnished over 47,000 homes with over almost 800,000 items. And just because they were open to helping. How many uh, households or how many families does household goods service a year? Um, household goods furnishes about um, 2,500 homes each year with about 60,000 items. Sharon. What are we looking at here? So that is our uh, new donation drop-off area. So we're open to accept donations of furniture and household items on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturday mornings from nine to noon. Um, and that is where people can now drop off. So um, one of the things we just completed is where people can pull in um, and then just stop, drop off their items. Uh, we have volunteers who would help them and then drive away without having to back up. Sharon, I happen to know that you guys have serviced a lot of people and there's a lot of great response to the work that Household Goods is doing. There's a story that particularly resonated with me and a quote that I'd like to read you, Scott's story. And Scott was somebody who Household Goods helped and he said, I was going to have my own bed. God was providing for me. I do not think I can put in words exactly how much concern and care that the people at Household Goods treated me with. My home is beautiful and it is mine. I do not know if those that donate will hear this, but all that you gave has helped me beyond a couch and a lamp. It shows me that people are kind and it gives me hope. Can you share with us a little bit about the types of people like Scott that you help at Household Goods? And then can you also uh, share with us, how does it make you feel to hear that kind of feedback from somebody in the community that you're helping? So the people um, who come to us come with a variety of circumstances. Some have been homeless, uh, some are veterans, um, some have had a fire or a flood. Um, we have a lot of people who are, have fled domestic violence situations, um, single parents, um, people with disabilities, people who are elderly. Really, um, the range of experiences that our clients have is just, um, it's huge. There's just such a large diversity of people and the circumstances that bring them to household goods. Um, you know, Scott's letter is to me it really encompasses everything that we try to do as an organization that feeling of 
being treated kindly and without judgment and really just accepting that, okay, here you are, what do you need? Um, and that feeling of hope, that was actually something that surprised me when I started because um, I just thought, well, we're giving furniture so people will take it and they'll say thank you and they'll be on their way. And that's something that we hear over and over again. It's that the experience that we provided for our clients went so far beyond the actual furniture items. And it instilled in them hope and um, just, you know, maybe a little bit of inspiration. Uh, they raised their heads higher when they left. And to me, you know, I couldn't ask for anything better. And that's our volunteers. You know, it goes back to our volunteers who are on the floor working with all of our clients and our donors and making that kind of an experience happen. Sharon, what does the future hold for household goods? So we just finished our uh, capital expansion project um, and that really gives us some infrastructure. Um, we have launched a couple of initiatives um, this year. We launched a um, fund to bed initiative. We noticed that um, over the past couple of years getting good quality um, used beds, it's not enough to meet the needs of the clients. So we launched a, um, a fund to bed uh, program where we're raising money specifically to buy wholesale uh, beds for our clients. And we also launched a transportation pilot program where we're trying to help people with the greatest need and the fewest resources get to household goods. Um, for some people, the difference between having a furnished home and not is just being able to transport the furniture and move it from Acton into their homes. So we're really in the future trying to reach people who need us the most and have the most difficulty getting here. How can people help if uh, they want to get involved with household goods? Um, people can help in a number of different ways. Um, we need volunteers to do everything at household goods. Um, we have a very uh, small staff. We only have five staff people, but yet we rely on a thousand volunteers. Um, so volunteering is a key component. Um, bringing us furniture and um, other smaller kitchen items. We have a complete list of what we accept on our website at householdgoods.org. Um, because of COVID, our ability to pick up furniture right now is very reduced. Um, and our pickup area tends to be acting in the surrounding areas. But anybody who has the ability to rent a truck or to do a furniture drive in their area um, would be greatly appreciated. Um, and people can also support us financially. Um, we are 100% reliant on philanthropy to keep our doors open and our lights on. Sharon, what I've heard from you about how you make homes is about dignity, about inspiration and hope. Uh, it's, it's really been, a, it sounds like a positive experience for both the people who volunteer their time as well as the people who are receiving um, services from household goods. We really appreciate the work that you do and hope that uh, you continue and uh, continue to make differences in people's lives. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.